Hey everybody, Nikki here. My channel is all about movies, so I thought in this video it might be fun to show you my movie prop collection. I don't have a huge collection or anything like that, but I do have a lot of prop replicas lying around in my apartment. I think it's fun to collect movie props, and I mainly collect screen accurate ones, meaning that they are identical to the ones in the movies. So let's start off with Harry Potter. This is the candy from Harry Potter. I think they're only seen in the first movie. And to be honest, this isn't my candy, it's my girlfriend's candy. Uh, she bought it at Leafston Studios in 2014 when we were making the movie location video of Harry Potter. And this is real candy, uh, but she never ate it and <laughs> she better not. It expired in December 2014. And the other one here, uh, there's a chocolate frog in here, just like in the movie. These aren't real frogs, are they? And this one expired in April 2015, two years ago, so not very safe to eat anymore, I think. <laughs> but it looks nice, and inside it, there is a little 3D image of Salazar Slytherin. I've got Dumbledore! Okay, and here I got ones from the Harry Potter movies, and these are mine. Um, I really like the boxes, it's like the real boxes from the Harry Potter movies. Let's check out the first one. The first one is Harry Potter's wand. And the box is really nice, it's some kind of silk. And here we have the Harry Potter wand. It doesn't work though. <laughs> I don't know what it's, what it's made of, but it's quite heavy. The only thing ruining it is the little trademark stamp there. And the next wand is in a black box, and this is Voldemort's wand. I just had to own it, it looks so cool. It really looks like a carved in bone. There are many details on it. Again, it has the trademark stamp, it's a bit annoying. Okay, the next Harry Potter prop is this ticket for Platform 9 3 quarters, as seen in the first movie. Hagrid hands this to Harry Potter on King's Cross Station, and I bought this one on King's Cross Station. <laughs> they had a little Harry Potter shop. I bought this for my movie location video of Harry Potter and I wanted to use this on the same bridge where Harry Potter gets the ticket. And it looks really cool, you can see the, the gold on it. The last Harry Potter prop is this time turner that Hermione uses in the third movie to travel in time. It doesn't spin though, like in the movie. It's really hard to turn and it doesn't make me time travel, I think. No, everything's the same. All right, I also got a Harry Potter costume and I guess you could say that's a prop too. So I, I might as well show you that. There, now I'm Harry Potter. Or just any Gryffindor student actually. It's not really high quality. It's a very cheap one from eBay. I bought it for the Harry Potter movie location video I did a few years ago and I haven't really used it since. Okay, let's talk about Star Wars. I don't have a lot of Star Wars props, but I do have this lightsaber. And this is not a cheap knockoff. This is Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber from Episode 3, made by Master Replica. And the blade looks like this. Really cool. And it makes sounds. Also when you clash it. So you can fight with it if you want. This is what it looks like at night. It kind of looks like the real thing. Normally you can't take the blade off, there's a lot of LEDs inside the blade. This was converted by Ultra Sabers and what they do is they dismantle this blade and put a single LED inside it and do something about the blade. And now I can just remove the blade and wear this for cosplay. I used to have a lot of these lightsabers, uh, I was pretty much collecting them. But eventually I sold them all, except this one. And I also got a Jedi costume. And here's the Jedi costume, and there's the lightsaber. I used this costume for my Star Wars movie location video back in 2014, and I mostly used it in Tunisia, which was a terrible idea because it was 45 degrees Celsius each day. It was uncomfortable to wear because it's made of wool and fleece, so yeah, you can imagine it. And it's homemade, by the way, except for the belt and the lightsaber, of course. Uh, my dad made it for me when I was a teenager. And this is not the only Star Wars costume I have. I also got a Kylo Ren costume. And this is the Kylo Ren costume. I also got these boots for the costume. 
The costume is really high quality. I got this from Exgoser, a Chinese company. I wore this costume for the Rogue One premiere last year, and I'm probably gonna wear it for episode 8 as well. It's really hard to wear this costume because I'm wearing like four or five uh, layers of fabric. The helmet looks really cool, but it's really hard to see out. Uh, it's kind of like looking through a mailbox. I wouldn't want to have a lightsaber battle with this on. Okay, that was Star Wars. Now I'm gonna talk about the movie on my shirt, Jurassic Park. As many of you know, I was just in Hawaii to make a video about the filming locations of Jurassic Park. And I bought some props for, th for the video. First of all, I got these two brochures. You can see them very well in the movie, but they are featured a couple of times. Look, when you open it up, you can see the Jurassic Park gates. Looks very nice. And then there's a lot of info. And there's a map of the entire fictional island. And there's a product placement right here for Kodak. You only see it briefly in the movie on a muddy brochure. So I hope Kodak didn't pay too much for this. Next up is this vehicle ID. And uh, you actually see them a lot of times in the movie. I just printed this myself and laminated it. And uh, I hung this in our own Jeep in Hawaii. It's just a little fun detail for the video. Also, I printed a lot of numbers and Jurassic Park logos for our Jeep. They were printed on magnet paper, so they stuck well onto the Jeep. And just to be safe, I had two copies of them all. And thank God for that, because some of them flew off when we drove. And I still got one of the magnets. I got this one, which were on the side of the Jeep. And it's printed on magnet paper. And now it's hanging on my fridge. I also got one of the license plates. I had two for the Jeep, but I only kept one of them. And it's in metal. It hangs above my computer now. And of course, I also got a Jurassic Park Ranger costume. Now I just need my ID badge. There. Now I'm a Jurassic Park Ranger. This is the costume you'll see me wear in the movie location video about Jurassic Park. And speaking of costumes, I got a couple of more costumes lying around that I might as well show you. This is of course V's costume from V for Vendetta. And this is not a high quality costume. It was quite cheap and I just bought it for a Halloween party. And this is Neo's costume from The Matrix. And this is also a cheap costume. The fabric is very thin. I'm only missing Neo's sunglasses. I used to have them, but you can wear anyone. But I do have Morpheus sunglasses, but they're not very comfortable to wear because they hurt your nose after a while and they leave a mark. And this is Tony Stark's shirt from Iron Man 3. And it really looks good. And the best part is that it has LED lights. So I got a switch right here and then it lights up. It's really bright at night. I wore this for a party once. My, all my friends thought it was really cool. Let's check out some more props. Here I have the coin of Harvey Dent or Two-Face. I don't know how movie accurate it is though, because when I watched the movie, the scratches on it looked to be different. In the ceiling in my living room, I have a face hugger from the Alien franchise. It's one of my favorite props. What the hell is that? Here I have two props from Inception. This is the totems of Cobb and Arthur. This is really not interesting, this is just a die. But it came with this. This is the spinning top that Cobb uses as his totem in the movie. And the only annoying thing is that it says Inception in the bottom. It's not very movie accurate. Unless it really says Inception in the movie too, but I don't think it does. I used this for the Inception movie location video, where I spin it in the end of the video in Paris, and my video ends just like the movie. And this is a prop replica from Pirates of the Caribbean. This is the key to the dead man's chest that David Jones carries. Unfortunately, I don't have the chest itself, so I don't know if it works. So, now it's time to look at props from The Lord of the Rings. First of all, here I have the One Ring, and it even has the Elvish inscriptions on it. There are markings. It's some form of Elvish. And here I have Aragorn's Even Star that Arwen gives him. It's made of silver, and it was quite expensive actually. When I was in New Zealand making the video about the filming locations of The Lord of the Rings, I took a stone from the Mordor location, so I guess it's kind of a prop. The location was really amazing. It was on a volcano called Mount Ruapehu. So yeah, it was on a volcano just like in the movie. When we visited the Hobbit sunset, I bought a green dragon mark. But this is not movie accurate though. It's only inspired by the movies. They serve beer in these inside the green dragon. The last prop is quite heavy. It's Aragorn's sword, Anduril from The Return of the King. 
it's a really long sword and it's high quality, it's real metal and there's leather on the handle and the inscriptions are there like in the movie. And speaking of swords, I also got the samurai sword from The Last Samurai. It's not sharp though. That was pretty much all of my movie props. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and I'll see you in the next video.